The time has come. Series 5 Nissan Patrol is getting the 12.3 inch Android display system. This is the first shipment that we have got in of these ones for ourselves that we're going to be branding the fitting bay and bringing in for ourselves to install for you guys. Very, very popular. We've had a few people supply it themselves and then we fit it for them. Though this thing looks identical, there are slight differences, especially with left and right hand drive. So we had a customer that bought one. I think he got it pretty cheap. It was for a right hand drive car. All of these clips don't line up. So what that means, you've literally got to cut the dash for it to fit or it will not fit. And it's a nightmare to get them to fit. So if you've got one and you're trying to fit it and you're like, this thing doesn't fit, likely you've got the wrong one. So that's the first thing you need to look for. Second thing is software. So that same unit was not compatible with the 360 camera. But anyway, we're gonna go into all of that stuff. We're gonna go through all the wiring, show you guys how to fit it, show you how the thing works. We've been testing it, very, very happy with it. This customer is a very good customer of ours and he actually has the dual screen. This is a dual screen. This is one of the screens for the dual screen setup. A lot of people ask about this from the video that's linked in the top right hand corner. Feel quality is really, really good. And when they work, they're a really good system. But we've had too many software issues where the supplier wasn't really helping us with updates and things like that. This is the first time I ever veered away from the supplier that we use for the 12.3, for the Tesla, for any other, most of our Android screens. The first time we veered away, we had issues. So that was a mistake on our end and complete transparency. We're gonna remove that system and put the 12.3 in. So with all that, before we jump over to the screen, if you need to know how to remove your genuine center console, I'll link a video right now in the top right hand corner. But otherwise, we're gonna remove the dual screen and fit the 12.3. Now let's quickly have a look at the 12.3. In the kit, you're going to get two wiring harnesses. You only need one of them. A good thing about this is if you have the TIL, you don't have to worry about hard wiring. Whereas on the Tesla screen, you need to turn the amp on. Second thing you get in the kit, Wi-Fi antenna, very good to fit, helps with wireless CarPlay. GPS antenna, this will help with uh, reception, GPS reception, data logging, all that sort of stuff. Two USB inputs. All your video in and outputs for reverse camera. It's got audio, AUX in, audio out, microphone input. So if you want to do an external mic, which is what we're going to do. And it's got a video out, okay? So we're gonna pay attention to that in a moment. The other thing it has is a provision for a SIM card. So you don't have to worry about hotspotting your phone or leaving a dongle in the car. You can literally pop a SIM right into it. So that's pretty cool. We've got some more wiring stuff here, which we're gonna look at. This one here, you don't need. This is for the hazard light. And this is for the reverse camera input. And then we've got a USB retention harness here. However, our kits will not be using this. I'm gonna show you what we use. We've designed these little flush mounts. So they go on the bottom section of the center part of the dash, just replaces one of the blanks and it's gonna give you audio for Apple CarPlay and also charging. So basically just a USB, which will plug into one of your supplied USBs, easy. And then this is just gonna get 12 volts power. So that's pretty cool. Back to the inputs. This unit does not have a HDMI output. So Series 5 Patrol has a HDMI in for the rear screens for the TIL. No HDMI out, but it does have a RCA video out. So what you're going to need is something like this. Now basically what this little box does, it takes video in from RCA and gives HDMI out. So with our kit TIL, obviously you get it. Um, but if you're doing this on your own or you've found your own screen or whatever, that's fine. Just know that you're gonna need something like that. Otherwise, the rear screens will still work on their own, standalone, but they won't work with this screen. So, something to take note of. This is a TI, so we're not gonna worry about it today, but future reference. Last, last thing, before, I usually say this at the end of the video, but if you want one of these, jump on the website, they will sell out fast. We've got another brand new kit right here. We are going to be offering the replacement camera system. It is no lie, it's no secret, that the camera on the Series 5 Patrol sucks. HD cameras all around, plugs directly into the unit. This will allow you to get HD video cameras, one. Two, you can actually swipe on the screen and look around the car, and you can change views and all that sort of stuff. So this is a way, way better system. This camera kit is not going on this car, so if you haven't, subscribe to the channel, and we're gonna do a video on how to install this. This is gonna be a big job, okay? So if you wanna DIY it, be prepared. With all that, we can jump in the car, remove the dual screen, and fit the new 12.3. Here we have it guys, the TI with the dual screen. This is what we're going to be removing. Removal is pretty much going to be the same whether you have 
Tesla Jewel or even just a factory setup. And we're gonna start right here. Plenty of videos showing you how to do this, so we're probably gonna breeze through this, but I'll make it quick. Pull this down, little tab on this gear selector, pop it off, put it back on, okay, don't lose it. Next up, this panel, all clips, it just pops straight up. There's one plug here, one plug here, one plug here, and some clips as well, so remove it, and take care of the clips when you're taking it off. And then these two side panels come off, and then that's gonna allow you to pretty much unscrew the screws holding all this center section in, rip it all out, and then you can take this bottom section out as well. So we'll kind of breeze through it, but it is pretty self-explanatory, and if you have any questions, comments below. So the tip to not scratching this panel, you wanna pull from this corner straight up. There's a plug right here, unplug it. It's gonna give you a lot of access. And then you're gonna go straight up and tilt out towards yourself, just like that. And then you can sit it on the uh, chair right there. And there you go. Out of the way, it hasn't touched anything. And then you can start unplugging your plugs and using tools to undo these clips and then unplug the last plug. Just like that, and we can get it out of the way. These ones here, start from the very bottom, pull back and out. Boom, just like that. Nice and easy. Panels out. Once you're at this section here, so you've got your centerpiece out, you will just be able to unplug it and take it out. The dual screen has the USB attached, which we've done this little flush mount. So we've actually got to remove this panel, but you would need to remove it anyway. So it's just clips. Just pull back on it. Get your hands underneath. There's some more clips on the bottom. There we go. Boom. Okay, so then you'll have the 12 volt connector, which you just squeeze and pull back. And then we'll have the USB. And if you've got a TI, you'll have two more plugs here for the heated seats. And so with that out, now you can pop this out. When you've got your flush mount, what you want to do from the back side, just open up these little tabs and push back from the front side. And then it will just pop out. So I've just used the flush mount that we had in there before, but you do the same with any of the blanks. Just lift these clips up and then push it out towards the back. That's that panel done. Now, whether you've got the factory screen or an aftermarket screen, you're gonna have to remove this silver trim. And from the back side, it's just got three screws. So just unscrew it, it comes out, and then you can transfer it over to your new screen. So that one's nice and easy. So once you've removed all your factory stuff, it should look something like this. These were the cables connected to your original screen and all the stuff for the CD changer. On the same bracket, the CD changer is attached to, there is this climate control module. So you need to remove the two T20s that are on holding it to the um, bracket, plug it in, and then leave it here for now, okay? So that's gonna get mounted somewhere. But what we need to do is grab the screen, pop it into place, and I can just tell you right now, you need to move this, because it's in the way. Do not unplug it, just move it. So I'm gonna undo the brackets. From this side here, you can reach them. They're eight millimeter bolts, and there's one at the, sort of front side here, so one, two, three, and then we can take it out, and you might be able to just sort of pop it down into place here, but I'm gonna play with it first and just see where we can get it. So for the DIYers, you're probably not gonna to wanna to do this, but what I'm going to do is unscrew this bracket from the module, and it's gonna make life a lot easier with in terms of uh, mounting that somewhere. Also, hold on to the bracket, don't throw it out. It's gonna take a bit of playing around, but you can actually get the module right here on the side. And now, I sort of went in behind and then tucked it in. I, it's almost like hard to get out, so if you pull straight back on and it comes out, but when it's in there, it sort of sits in place. So what we can do is get a big piece of double-sided tape on the other side, put it right into place right there. That won't go anywhere. And then you can even get it behind this little, there's a little clip sort of part of the dash right here. You might be able to get it in behind that. There you go, sort of like that to help hold it in place. So we'll get some double-sided on that. Next up, you have this module here. So this one wants to go 
don't know yet. I'll, I'll find where that's going to go and I'll let you know. So what we want to do now is get all of the main plugs and bring them up to this section here because we want this area as free as you possibly can. Um, the control module for the aircon I've mounted here, so that's double sided onto another little module that's there. That module has a speaker on it, so allow a good amount of space here for that speaker so that you can still hear it. Now we've got the main harness. So this is the harness we're gonna use. Basically, it's the one with less plugs on it. So there's one that has like 100,000 plugs. There's one with five, six, that's the one you want. So the main power goes into one of these plugs. There we go, boom, that's one. Antenna goes into this antenna plug right here. It will only go one way. It's always the way that you don't try first. There we go. This plug here goes to one of the plugs that was in the original display. Boom, like that. And then the other one is the camera plug. Very important. These, I know, can be interchanged between some of the plugs down here. This is the second screen plug. Okay, that's the one you want. And I can just check the pin out right here and I can tell you that is definitely the camera. Which means this one you don't need. So you can chop it off if you want to make it, get it out of your way. Um, but I'm probably just going to leave it for now just in case. So we'll clean this up. And that's a lot of the plug and play section for the powers at least done. Next up we have this plug here. That goes into the plug that was originally plugged into your hazard light. Okay, so we're going to plug that in. On the unit, there'll be a little provision for this plug here. Take note of the tab because it only goes one way. And then moving on to this section here, there's a little orange plug coming off of the loom. It will only go one way. Plug that in there, orange to orange. Okay. Camera plug. So the harness that you plugged in, make sure it's the one that you plugged in and not the one that you didn't plug in. Plug that into that cable there, tape it up. So once you've done that, all you've got to do now is your in and outputs. So figure out where you want your USBs to go, run them. If you get our kit, obviously you'll get the flush mount and you can do your blanking plate. And then the second USB, run it wherever you want. Wi-Fi antenna, keep it out of the way of electronics. So go down here on this air vent or on this panel or behind that panel. If it's here, you're most likely going to get interference. So get it out of the way. GPS antenna. A pillar. A pillar has two covers on it and then two 10 millimeter bolts and then the whole thing pulls off. You can mount the GPS antenna in this section here underneath. There's plenty of room there. And then run it behind the glove box to the screen. That's what we're going to do. Your in and outputs. So you don't really have to worry about these unless you're doing aftermarket cameras or you've got a TIL. So we're gonna tape it up and we're gonna run the SD card into the glove box. And that's pretty much it. So we'll touch back when that's done and then we can start test fitting the unit. Okay, so once you are pretty much got everything plugged in, GPS antenna is done, microphone is done if you're doing it, USBs are done, we've got the new flush mount here, or blanking plug. You can pop this panel back in, so remembering one, two, three, four plugs, and then transfer all of your clips over to the new screen, which we haven't done that yet, but I've got all the clips down there ready to go. You can start plugging things in. Just take note, the GPS antenna and the Wi-Fi antenna have the same connection but they're different colors, so one's gold, one's silver. Make sure you get them the right way around. Everything else will only go into one port on the unit. So just be careful, look at it. These can be sort of easy if you see them. They can be sort of easy to mess up because if it's a four pin, it might fit into the six pin just, but it won't fit properly. So just make sure you count the pins when you plug it in. Hope that makes sense. Okay, once everything's plugged in, we're gonna work our way top down and try and get these clips to sort of go in. Alright guys, we've got the unit in, we've just been going through some settings, getting the cameras to work, getting aircon working, everything sort of in control. So basically go into reverse, it will show the factory camera, press the camera button, it'll bring up the factory camera and you can go through and change your camera views as well. Again, mentioned this before, factory cameras aren't that good. This will work with the aftermarket 360 camera. Subscribe, we will do a video on that install coming up. Uh, Aircon controls, so you can go AC on, crank it up. Now if you hit rear, you have full control over the rear now. So we can turn the rear fans up and we can change the rear climate control. And you'll be able to see down here, going up. Okay, so 24 degrees, 22, 
as you go and then the fan as well. And then you can turn that off and we can turn aircon off just like that with the press of a button. Uh, coming back, that's your home button up here. This is how the system looks. We're gonna go through and test Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, get this thing back together. Reassembly is just gonna be the side panels first and then that last panel at the very bottom. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much the system in. So we'll get it all together and then do a run through on CarPlay. All right guys, that is the system in. We're just cleaning it up, getting everything ready to go. I just wanna show you wireless CarPlay. So we've just turned the system on. What it will do is pair to your phone via Bluetooth. Once it's paired, Apple CarPlay will connect. So this happens pretty quickly. So pair success, that's the phone paired. And then in seconds you're in CarPlay. Okay, so sound is obviously very good. Um, we can go from the top here, get out of CarPlay. So you've got navigation, which you can map for Google Maps or something like that using the internet. So with the SIM card port provided, AM, FM radio, music, which you can use either this USB or the USB in the glove box. Video, same thing. Bluetooth, you want to pair your phone. We've done an aftermarket mic, but apparently the built-in mic is pretty good. We just stick to aftermarket external mics, they're way better. Settings, if you want to go through all the unit settings, and this is going to bring up all of the apps. So you've got the aircon control, test your GPS reception, APK installer, so if you want to go and download other APK files from Google, you can. Um, there's a whole bunch of stuff in here. DSP for the sound, you can go and scroll Facebook if you want. Google, Google Maps, Play Store, so once you've got internet connected, log into Play Store, put your Gmail account in, download all the apps that you want, go crazy with it. YouTube is already there, so if you want to watch YouTube, you can do that. Yes, it works while you're driving. That is a setting that you can turn off, so if you prefer safety, we prefer safety. Don't watch videos while you're driving, turn that on. But if you want it off, you can have it off as well. Totally up to you. Um, home button's up here, and that's pretty much an overview of the system. There is a lot going on. Camera button here, so if you want to access the camera, just press that button. Boom, it brings up the cameras. They will also come up in reverse. Um, for factory stuff, yes, it works with the uh, rear screens. We looked at that at the start of the video. The hot and cold buttons. <laughs> Heated seats and cooling seats buttons uh, light up. They illuminate, but they don't do anything. They don't work. You'll still have to use your dials if you've got factory heated seats. If you've got aftermarket seats, which we also do, you've got switches on the seats or we've got the factory controls as well. Uh, moving on, day and night setting. So very quick, you can change the brightness level. It also does work with the key. Uh, and then vehicle settings. So if we go into home here and then we go over to car settings, you can go through and play with parking sensors. Okay, so you can turn them on and off and it works. Uh, volume, sensitivity, all that sort of stuff. Sonar information, the switch you can turn on or off, front sensors on, the interruption, all that stuff. Okay, that all works. So that that is very important for a lot of people, the sensors work. Um, we can test that right now. Mm -hmm. Okay guys, speaking about those parking sensors, now if we go into reverse, I've got my toolbox at the front of the car as you can see. So you can just see it's right there. Sensors are going off their head. How do we turn them off? Just press the button. Nice and easy, they are off, you can turn them back on. If you turn them off, as soon as you go to park or drive or reverse or any other gear, back into reverse, they're just gonna revert back on. Okay, so now they're back on. So it's just gonna be a matter of turning them off. Um, that's pretty much the only way to turn them off, so there is that, but at least you can turn them off because a lot of the time, people would have to go into neutral so the sensors wouldn't go off or put the handbrake on or something. So that is the camera, that is the sensors, that's how you can turn them on and off. Uh, we went through pretty much everything else. If you go here to T-Link or Z-Link, which is your CarPlay, if we play music, steering wheel controls are working, and then you can go through and change the track as well. And now if we press that button in, it'll bring you home. So that's like a home button. DSP is right here, nice and easy to get to, so if you wanna play with all the audio, you can. The units have a lot of features. We're not gonna do a full review right now. This is more just the install side of things. Um, if you have any questions about the unit, drop them in the comments below. Subscribe to the channel. We are going to do the 360 camera and we're going to do a review on the unit. So that'll be an in-depth, every setting, you name it, on this unit. And that is pretty much it. If you want to reach out to us, it's www.shoptfb.com. Link for this exact screen, the one that we are getting, that's the, through my supplier that we've been using for years now. That will be first link in the description. Shop TFB website. You can go and get it. They will sell out fast. And yeah, that's pretty much it.
any questions, drop them in the comments below. Subscribe to the channel, like the video, and catch you in the next one.